So now that our basic elements are in place, the next step is color. Adding color in Illustrator is a fun and easy process with swatches, patterns and gradients. But it's important to remember that just choosing a color on screen isn't going to be accurate or correct, especially when it comes to print. So I'll also share with you some cool studio techniques for correct color specifications and swatch editing, which will not only speed up the production of your artwork, but help prevent mistakes, costly mistakes, when it comes to preparing your artwork for print. So back in our CMYK print document, we actually want the background of this entire design to be black. So what we'll do is we'll start out by coming to our layers and unlocking the backdrop color, okay? And then come over to our A3 page. This is the one that we're going to be working on. Now I'm just going to go back to my main selection tool, click on the background shape, and then over in the color panel, let's drag our K value, which is black, all the way up to 100%. Now, if you remember earlier on in the training in our preferences section, we set the blacks to display accurately. Do you remember that? Well, this is the exact time that this becomes crucial. If we sent this design to print at this point, the background would look very washed out and not a solid dense black at all. So thanks to the preference setting, we can actually see that. That. You can see it's just not a solid enough black, and we need to prepare a black to print that's much more dense, and in fact uses four colors instead of one. So I'm going to show you how that works, so give you an idea of the print process as well. What I'm going to do is scroll over here and maybe just zoom up a little bit over on the left-hand side, give ourselves a bit of room. I'm going to deselect the background, and then just come over and select the rectangle tool and draw a new shape. Okay, It doesn't matter how big or small it is, really doesn't make any difference. Go back to your main selection tool and double check. We have this filled with 100% black. And then what we're going to do is just show ourselves a palette for a second that we need a one option from. So come to your window menu and come down to the attributes option. And in the attributes palette, when it comes up, you'll see an overprint fill button. All right, go ahead and turn that on. Then you can close the panel down. Now what we can do is just hold down the Option key or the Alt key on the PC and drag a quick copy of this over to one side and we'll change the coloring here. So let's make this say 60 cyan and make sure you take the black value down to zero. Okay. Now we'll have another copy. All right. Doesn't matter where you drag it. Let's change it here. Let's drop the cyan out and maybe push this one up to let's do 40 percent. And then we'll do another copy, and as you've guessed it, we're going to put yellow in this one. So drag the magenta out, and let's just push around 20% yellow in, okay? Now, what we're going to do is go up to the View menu, and you'll see there's a function called Overprint Preview. And this is the reason we turned on the Overprint button just a second ago. We want to see how these colors interact when they're printed on top of each other. So let's start out. We've got our simple black background. I'll zoom in again so we can see this more closely. Let's say we took our yellow and we overlapped it onto the black. Okay, I'll do it sort of on the corner so this will be our overlap area. And when I deselect that, you can now already see in this area here a darkening. All right, it looks slightly brownish and slightly yellow because you are only mixing those two colors. Well, what if we then start adding the others? Let's take our magenta shape and also drop that in the same place. You can now see that that's getting even darker but now has a red tint to it. If we take our cyan shape and drop that into the same place and now overprint all of those colors, look at the difference right there. If I zoom up on that, you can see the solid difference between a dense black made up of four colors and tints of those colors and just the standard 100% black. So really for our backgrounds, what we need is a single swatch color that uses all of those four colors together and then we can apply it across our entire document, okay? So what I'll do is I'll get rid of those. We don't need them. We can go back up to the view menu and turn off overprint preview and then we can come back over and make a very quick change. So we can still select our box in the background here, come over to the color panel, and now mix a color that uses those same values. Now this is only my suggestion. This is a dense black that I tend to use on a regular basis for artwork that we do here in the studio. Your printer may have different specifications. If you're looking to do a project like this, it might be worth talking to the printer because they might have their own guidelines, okay? But I'm gonna say 60, 40, 20 and 100 say okay and we can now in fact see the italia logo which remember is only in 100 percent black so you can now see the difference between the two of them now we've created a master color and we wish to reuse it so ideally what we need to do is save this as a swatch now there's a couple of ways we can do that in the swatches panel down here on the lower right hand side we can come to the fly out on the side and go ahead and say new swatch what we can also do is down the bottom of the panel you can see a small page icon which when you click will create a new swatch and also bring up the naming dialog box now by default it always fills the swatch name with the cmyk breakdown personally i don't like this i like to know what my colors are called and i like to be able to name them as i go along so let's rename this dense black okay it is a process color and we do want to make it a global swatch. 
That means if we've applied it in multiple locations in our artwork, we can come back into the swatch here, make a change to any of these values. It will then update wherever it's been used in the document. Okay, so do make sure you make this a global swatch. If we go ahead now and click OK, that swatch will be applied to the graphic we now have selected. So let's say we want to apply it to the other two backgrounds over here. We can use the eyedropper tool for this. Now the eyedropper tool is over here in the tools panel and shortcut wise you might expect it to be E but remember E is your free transform so what could eyedropper be? Well quite funnily it's I. I always like the fact that it's simpler than you think. So let's hit the I key to give us the eyedropper tool and you'll see it's currently empty okay. Well if we hover over our background here and click you'll see the icon essentially stays the same but if we hold down the option key or the alt key on the PC it switches to show us that it's full with color and that can now be applied to other elements. So keeping that key held down, come over our background here and click on the right hand side to apply the same swatch to the A4 and we'll come down here and do exactly the same to our flyer at the bottom. When you're done, you can go back to the main selection tool. So we've added our dense background there, things are looking a lot better.